And at the end of the second day, your TSB was at minus eight, which is huge. I don't, I don't think I've seen that number before. I recently rode across the entire state of Nevada on the loneliest road in America, 340 miles, which is much longer than I had ever ridden before. I never would have survived on my own. And luckily, I didn't have to. I trained with Ryan Thomas, the head coach at the Road Cycling Academy, and this is the story of how we trained. We started about, it's like three or four months out from the goal. So you basically said, oh, let's, let's do this massive ride. And I was like, okay. And we were definitely building up to that. And then we just got curveballs, we changed the dates and other and things thrown in and then COVID happened. And it was just, at the end of the day, I think I sent you an email and we we're trying to move things around. What's the, what's the best case scenario? And I was like, well, it's going to suck anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. You know what doesn't suck? Bombas. In fact, their products are so good that they stand behind them with a 100% happiness guarantee, which means Bombas will replace your items within one year of the purchase date. If they're the wrong size, they get worn or torn, they disappear with your luggage, anything that might happen to them. Bombas sells high quality socks, underwear, and shirts. I love their performance compression socks and cycling socks in particular. And while they are a little pricey, they're also high quality. Designed with strategic cushioning at the ball of the foot, good airflow ventilation, and they're made from special performance yarn, so you know they'll last. If you check them out before, make sure to look again because they just dropped their new holiday styles and they look awesome. And the cherry on top, as always, for every item you purchase, Bombas donates an item to those in need. Use code MITCH20 at checkout to get 20% off your first order. For those of you buying through the link in the description, thank you for supporting the channel. And thank you, Bombas, for sponsoring this video. The main thing for preparing for something like that is the mental prep for just sitting on a bike for that long and just being able to cope with it. I think you actually did it really well. Like looking at the data for the ride, you did spend no time, it was probably like 20 minutes over the whole two days of riding where you spent in zone three heart rate. So you never pushed yourself, you never went over that limit. And I think that was the big thing for you. And I, I just like, I tried to drum that into you before. Don't go hard at any point whatsoever because you'll just suffer. I think you nailed it. That was, those were like the two refrains in my head while I was riding. Ryan said, it's going to suck no matter what. <laughs> so I was just like, all right, just keep going. And then I knew, I was like, I have to keep it in zone one. Because I, I had done that like longer ride um, yeah. right before I got COVID. And on that one, I was like pushing. And by the end, my legs were cramping up and I ended up like cutting that one short. That's some pretty insane cramps right now. And I think that was, I'm glad I had that experience because I think if I didn't on the final two day ride, I would have pushed myself. I wouldn't have made it to the end. Yeah, it's good to fail sometimes because you know what not to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if somebody was like, I have four hours a day to ride. I don't have a job. I don't have a partner. I have no responsibilities but the bike. Um, it's rare. What's the ideal scenario? Like how long does somebody need to properly prepare for a 24 hour ride? To prepare for any sort of long event like that or any, any event at all, you kind of need like a three, four, five months of proper training and specific training. So the ideal prep, you go through the same phases, right? You go through the build phase, so you're focusing on that um, foundations, your base fitness, your endurance for two to three or two months, basically. Just trying to get a lot of volume in and get that fitness right up. And then that mile, like six to eight weeks out from the event, you kind of make it specialized. So for this one, I was doing like super long rides, kind of different in a sense, like if you're preparing for a criterium race, a one hour event or a three hour, four hour event, then you would do specific intervals for the course or like the demands of the event. So you do hard stuff, but for an event like this, you're just in zone two. So the specifications and training specifically for it is doing really long rides. In a sense, it is good to do high intensity work because it lifts that ceiling a little bit and it lifts that recovery and your heart rate response and just the general overall adaptations of fitness. But to prepare for something like this, you just want to get volume in. Like I said before, you want to get that loading. At the end of your, I'll have a look right now, at the end of the two days, your, we had a pretty easy run into it. So we had like a like a 10-day taper into it. And at the end of the second day, your TSB was at minus 80, which is huge. I don't, I don't think I've seen that number before. That's a massive decrease in stress balance. 
And for reference, yeah, the first day you had 340 T score, and the second day you had 460 T score. Like to be able to accumulate that is super difficult in training. So you would have to do it over a two to three week period rather than doing it over two days or three or four days. Like we try and accumulate that. And you get the similar sensation. Like if you do seven days straight of riding and you're doing five, four to five hours a day, you get a similar sort of feeling at the end of that seventh day where you're like, you wake up and your legs just feel like crap and it takes you an hour to get into it. Mm. At the end of it, you feel like you've done 12 hours because you've, you have had no recovery for seven days. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing you want to do in preparation for it if you have like four hours a day. Yeah, I think in, in hindsight, we actually it actually wasn't too bad. And turns out I didn't get the flu or a bug from Val. It turns out it was COVID. Got COVID, what was it, five weeks out? Um, yeah. So it was a pretty, pretty bad scenario in that sense. But I think it kind of gave us a bit of recovery going into it. And then we just loaded up with the main one we did was two six-hour days back-to-back, um, which actually worked out reasonably well in the loading aspect. Mm-hmm. We yeah. actually, I think it actually worked out reasonably well. <laughs> it felt good. Like on the ride, at no point during the ride did I feel from a cardiovascular standpoint or from like a muscle standpoint, I can't do this. This is not like my legs aren't sore. My legs are fine. It's just that my body aches, like my butt hurts. <laughs> My knee is starting to ache. My arms, like, aren't, like, really sore, but the bones ache. Like, it's just an ache. It's not a, like, doesn't feel like a productive pain. In fact, on the very last bit, there was, like, a 10-mile climb at the very end. And that's when I pushed into zone three because I was like, all right, like, I'm feeling good. I can can kind of go here. And I was really proud of myself, like, at the end of, like, these two days – I'm like 300 plus miles in and to be able to kind of kick it up a notch, I was like, okay, it like, this worked. The plan worked. It felt, it felt good instead of just collapsing on the other side of the, the finish yeah. line. Yeah, I did notice that. that you, you leaned on it a bit towards the end. Like it was did. also getting dark and Val's like, you're not allowed to ride <laughs> at night, which was like a whole thing. And, and that was why I turned it into two yeah. days ultimately, but yeah. it was dark and she's like, you cannot be on the road anymore. So <laughs> between like, I was like, but Ryan said, I can't go above zone one. And she's like, we're done. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> put a lot off. Luckily I had the honeymoon right after. Uh, I was just going to so say, luckily, <laughs> you got the second part where they straight off. So. I had no idea what it would be like, uh, and even at, like, I learned a lot on this. I also learned a lot about myself and the fact that yeah. I don't want to be an endurance, uh, an ultra endurance <laughs> cyclist. Like, hats That's off to know. those people. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad I did it. And there's like so many other kinds of things in cycling that I want to try. And see, because yeah. I feel like that's the journey I'm on. I'm like, okay, I did this. What is the criteria I'm like? So it'll be interesting to see the the different demand, like how you feel after doing like an hour crit. Yeah. Like it's a max effort. It's completely different. But yeah. seeing how you, what, which one you enjoy more or you don't like as much. <laughs> yeah. You've kind of inspired me. I'm from a small country town in Australia. It's like 450, 500K from uh. where I live now. Since I've lived up here, like I wanted to, I want to ride home in one go. So me and a mate tentatively locked it in that we're going to ride back at the end of November. Nice. I'll get to experience your pain. That's cool. Thanks again to Bombas for sponsoring this video. Remember to use code Mitch20 at checkout for 20% off your first order.